In machine learning, the decision boundary is an integral component of classification problems. But what exactly is a decision boundary? Well, I like to think of a decision boundary as the border between two countries. Depending on where you're standing relative to the border determines whether you are in the United States or Canada. That's a decision boundary. Now in mathematics, a decision boundary is a hypersurface. And what is a hypersurface? Well, I think the best way to understand what a hypersurface is, is to first understand what a surface is. And we all know what a surface is, right? For example, the surface of this apple. The surface is the outside of the apple. However, this apple exists in three-dimensional space, and the surface is two-dimensional. The surface is what separates the inside of the apple from the outside of the apple. So in geometrical terms, a surface is a way of partitioning three-dimensional space. A hypersurface is this same concept of a surface, but generalized into higher dimensional space. So a hypersurface is a way of partitioning higher dimensional space, which turns out to be a really powerful concept. So here's a really simple definition of a hypersurface using some machine learning terminology. Given a n-dimensional input space, a hypersurface is a n minus 1 dimensional subset of that n dimensional input space, which sounds really complicated, but it's really quite simple. For example, imagine a two dimensional input space, such as the Cartesian plane or the xy coordinate space. A hypersurface is a two minus one dimensional subset of this two dimensional input space. And of course, a one-dimensional subset of this two-dimensional input space is a line or a curve. So you can think of a hypersurface as a line on a piece of paper. And what's really cool about this hypersurface is that it divides our input space into two different regions. So how do we represent these two regions? The way we do it is by replacing this equal sign with the inequality. So for example, y less than x plus one represents the region underneath the line, which is our blue region. And then y greater than or equal to x plus one represents the region on or above the line, which is our red region. Okay, so now let's place a data point into this input space. And the question is, does this data point reside in the blue region or the red region? And we can tell just by looking at it that it resides in the blue region. However, we can't rely on this technique whenever we go into higher dimensional space. We won't have the luxury of being able to just look at it. What we need is a mathematical solution. And that solution is a threshold function. So we have our data point, 1, 1, where x equals 1 and y equals 1. And then we have our blue region, which is represented by the following inequality. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this inequality in a conditional statement. So if y is less than x plus 1, then the data point resides in the blue region. Otherwise, it's in the red region. So this is essentially a threshold function. And all we have to do is plug in this data point, or these inputs, into the threshold function, and it will tell us whether or not the data point resides in the blue region or the red region. So let's go ahead and do that. So if one is less than one plus one, then the data point resides in the blue region, otherwise it's in the red region. And since one is less than two, we know that this data point resides in the blue region. So what's cool is that we can take any data point in this input space and we can feed it into our threshold function and it will tell us if this data point resides in the blue region or the red region. And this is how we classify data points. Okay, let's approach this from a different perspective. Let's say we have a collection of data points that fall into one of two classes, the blue class and the red class. What we're looking for is a hypersurface that partitions this two-dimensional input space in such a way that the blue data points fall into one region and the red data points fall into the other. A hypersurface that does this is the same hypersurface that we used in the previous example. 
And what we have here is a predictive model that predicts that data points that fall into this blue region are part of the blue class, and data points that fall into this red region are part of the red class. So that's what makes this hypersurface a decision boundary. Depending on where a data point falls relative to the hypersurface or decision boundary determines whether we classify that data point as part of the blue class or the red class. So let's add a couple more data points to this input space. So this data point right here is part of the blue class and our model accurately predicts that this data point is part of the blue class, which is good. However, it misclassifies this data point as being part of the red class, when really it's part of the blue class. So our model is no longer 100% accurate. So if we want to make our model 100% accurate, what we need to do is we need to update it so that it has a better fit to this data. In other words, we need to update this hypersurface so that it does a better job of separating these data points. However, we have a problem. And the problem is that there doesn't exist a linear decision boundary that can separate these data points or separate these classes. What we need is a nonlinear decision boundary, such as y equals x squared. So what we've done here is we fit our model to the training data. So this is all good, but there is one problem with what I'm doing here, and that's that I'm using my brain, my neural network, to fit this model to the data. Is there a mathematical process of finding and fitting a decision boundary to the data? And there is, and it's the essence of statistical learning, which is a important framework in machine learning. One of the main objectives of machine learning is to find and fit a decision boundary to the data to partition the input space, whether that's two-dimensional or highly dimensional, in such a way that it separates the classes into different regions. And that's why the decision boundary is a integral component of classification problems.